Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Dog Q&A. This is number 35. And today I'm going to give you a brief overview of tail wagging in dogs. Some things to think about when you're trying to read a dog's body language and factor in the tail movement. It's not always a wagging tail is a happy dog, hint, hint. So <laughs> keep that in mind because that is something I hear a lot. It's also something I even heard once at a dog training conference. A woman questioned whether the dog was unhappy, quote unquote, because the tail was wagging. But at the daycare, one of the daycares where I worked, we had a dog attack another dog with the tail doing a slow tail wag. So that dog obviously did not stay in daycare. Um, okay, so we're going to, I'll pull up my slideshow here. I'm gonna give you a few um, tips on how to interpret a dog's tail movement or wag, if you wanna call it that. And um, the three things I'm gonna to address today are why dogs wag their tails. Does a wagging tail always mean a happy dog? And the direction of the wag, which can mean different things. So something to think about. Okay, so first up is why do dogs wag their tails? So the four main reasons are balance, Dogs use their tails for balance when they're turning or running. Maybe they're walking on a narrow structure, climbing, leaping, that kind of thing. It's also a calming signal, which helps dogs avoid unnecessary conflict by showing that they're not a threat. Um, when puppies are playing, if it gets too rough, dogs can wave their tails in the air like a white flag, like. Um, as a signal to the other dog that they're calling a truce. They're not enjoying the play anymore, so it can be a signal like that. They can spread their scent. So dogs will um, spread their scent from their anal gland using the tail. And the more confident the dog, the higher the tail. So that's why when you see a very high stiff tail, that's a dog who's communicating a lot of things and they're not um, typically positive things. <laughs> They're just saying I'm extremely confident. Um, so the fourth one is communication in regards to their state of being or their emotions. And in the next four video examples, I'm going to show you four different states of being that dogs can communicate. So let me make sure this isn't blocking that. So Regarding different tail wags, the first one up is a happy dog. I'm actually only going to do three of these, excuse me. Okay, so this one is actually a nice, relaxed, happy dog. And hopefully I'm not going to see an ad right here. Okay. He goes crazy. So that dog, I'm going to mute this. You can see the tail wagging with the body. So body moving with the tail, that's a relaxed dog. So we like that. Okay, and then next up. So in regards to this, you wanna look at the overall context. So you wanna make sure that um, you're reading the whole dog and not just the... <laughs> not just the tail. So that's an extremely excited dog, jumping around, being wild, pick me up. Okay. So again, greeting the owner and that dog doesn't have a tail. So in that case, you have to read the entire context of the dog. So I'm actually gonna stop here and move on to the next one. So the next one is anxious or fearful dogs. What do their tails look like? This video is gonna go very fast. So you're gonna watch for a small brown dog in the midst of this pile of dogs. And if you wanna learn about dog body language, go to a dog park. So watch quickly, you're gonna see a small tan colored dog in the midst of this. If I can get the video to play, here we go. 
not the big one there, that's a Ridgeback, but right there, that tiny dog. Look at the tail, even though it's docked, you can see in that dog's body language, I'll back it up here, that that dog is trying to avoid everything. The ears are back. Let's see if we can pause it on that guy. So you can see that the ears are back, the bottom half of the dog is kind of tucked under. So even without a tail, we can see that that dog is nervous in the midst of all those big dogs, as he should be, because some of those dogs are breeds that are known to have a predatory instinct. So you can see he's just trying to get away from the whole mix. So that's an anxious, fearful dog. Now we've got an aggressive or reactive dog. So what does a dog who is reacting to something look like? Let's play this one. And the title is called, You Can't Always Trust a Wagging Tail. This is why. If you look closely, you'll see that tail is high and stiff and that body is not moving with the tail. So that's a, actually what we call a flagging tail, which is a dog who is highly aroused. So in regards to this dog, you're gonna see a different communication from that moving tail, which is not a heavy dog. As you can see by the face, and if you can hear the barking and growling, that would help too. But even without the sound, you can tell that that dog is not pleased that someone's going by their house. Okay, so moving along here. Now let's talk about um, the direction of a dog's tail. So this is something that's not often discussed. It's very interesting to me that a left tail wag versus a right tail wag mean two different things. So the left biased is a negative um, response or the dog trying to avoid. The right biased wag is a dog who wants to approach or wants you to approach. So um, we're gonna look at this in terms of the dog's point of view. So the dog's right side and the dog's left side, that's how we determine the direction of the tail. So here's, this is interesting. This is a dog with um, doing both behaviors. And I think they may have trained this because that's pretty cool. But you'll see at first, there's no wag, the tail's in the middle. And then you'll see the, I believe the left and then the right, we'll take a look. So we've got the right, okay, right first. So right wag, and that's a relaxed dog. And then you see the no wag, so the tail stopped. Now we're going to the left wag. So the left wag um, or left leaning wag is actually a dog who wants to avoid things. So how cool is that? You don't often hear about that kind of thing. So the right wag, the center with no wag, and then the left. And again, that's the dog's left. So um, something to think about when you're trying to interpret a dog's language. What about dogs that don't have a tail or the tail's docked? What I find with these dogs is that they tend to wag their entire bodies and their movements become extremely ex exaggerated overall. And because they don't have the tail to help communicate, so they make things much more clear typically. So here's a, a video of a boxer playing with a cat, to kind of give you an example. So, and it, the cat is, not as afraid as he looks. He's a little bit unsure about this whole thing, but look how the dog is exaggerating every movement. The huge play bow, lifting the feet, that's another appeasement type thing, a calming signal. And you can see um, shaking the head and you'll see the little nub of the tail move, but look how the body is moving and wagging instead of just the tail. So that's what dogs without tails typically do end up doing is they'll use their entire body to communicate versus just the tail. And if you want, we can watch that again here, just so it's clear. So you're just seeing, look for the body movement instead of the tail movement. So you'll kind of, um, it gives you an idea of how dogs without tails are kind of forced to communicate because they don't have that signal. So look at the body wagging. 
So he's like, if I had a tail, I'd be wagging it right now, <laughs> but I don't. So here's what I'm doing. And the cat understands it and actually initiate or um, joins in the play with the dog. So that's kind of cute. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of a dog's tail wagging. The next time your dog wags his or her tail, try to figure out what direction it's going. That's kind of a cool thing to do. And that will give you more of an idea of if it's going to your dog's right side, that's a relaxed wag. If it's going to your dog's left side, your dog's trying to avoid. So keep that in mind. And then it'll help strengthen that bond between the two of you when you can understand your dog's body language better. So if you've got any behavior issues you wanna work through or talk about and you wanna be a guest on Dog Q&A, you can email me at uh, casperscanines at gmail.com, which is on my website as well. And then you can also visit my website for online dog training. Okay, everyone, hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a great week and I will see you next week. All right, bye-bye.